guys, this is Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Monday. It is July the 31st. It's the end of the month. It's going to be a busy week. This coming week, we have uh, a number of the larger energy companies, including some of the uh, companies I talk about on a regular basis, reporting this week. Uh, and some of those are uh, Devon Energy and Occidental Petroleum, Enbridge, and uh, who else? Energy Transfer. Uh, today, what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, Devon. So let me just look at my notes here because I just want to share a couple of things about Devon with you quickly before I get into the uh, presentation uh, on Devon. So uh, let me just open up my uh, presentation anyway so that, uh, you don't have to look at my pretty face. You can rather look at a pretty face of Devon's head office. Um, last uh, quarter, so... Uh, let's first look at what's coming. So the analysts are, are anticipating earnings per share EPS of about $1.17. We'll have to see how, uh, how by by what number they get it wrong. Um, a, a note that I just made here, which I wanted to share with you, is sometimes it's not the earnings beat or miss that most affects the price of the stock, but the uh, guidance or the uh, you know the forward guidance or forecast rather than the uh, the actual earnings. Last quarter, Devon beat earnings by eight cents per share, so EPS by 0 0.08, eight cents a share, followed immediately uh, by dropping 3.6% uh, the very next day in the share price. So uh, who knows what will happen tomorrow, right? So uh, in the previous couple of quarters, except for the last quarter, the two preceding that, um, it was total carnage. Uh, we had a uh, EPS estimate in uh, Q4 of 2022 of 175, they came in at 166. The stock dropped 10%. The next quarter, the uh, estimate was 221. They came in at 218, uh, missed by three three pennies. The stock dropped 12.6%. So um, if you're a long shareholder in Devon, you're probably not very uh, happy going into this uh, earnings release. But let's take a look at Devon and see if we can uh, get some daylight and see what's going on with Devon as a stock in the marketplace. So um, going here to simply Wall Street. So uh, once again, if you see these dark backgrounds or black backgrounds on the, on the uh, presentation screen, they're all from simply Wall Street. You can go to simplywallstreet.com. Uh, cool website. Uh, some of the information is a little bit quirky, but most of it is good. So um, Devon, a couple of pros and cons here. So uh, on the green side, price to earnings ratio 5.7 is below the market average. So the US market average is not the energy sector, right? So the US market around 15.8, I've mentioned this many times before, if you wanna get into a new position, you actually wanna get into a new stock uh, when the EPS is, is significantly below 15 because it's kind of the market average. So right now we're at around almost 16. So 5.7 uh, on a forward basis is a, uh, a pretty good price to get in potentially. <laughs> <laughs> but at the very at the very uh, least, wait until after tomorrow, right? But uh, it's 15 minutes before the market closes. So uh, hopefully by the time you see this, uh, you can buy anyway. So uh, <laughs> trade with caution. Earnings have grown 57% over the uh, per year over the past five years. It's pretty good. It's trading a good value compared to its peers because it's sort of in line with the um, energy sector. A couple of... Uh, Red bullets here. Uh, earnings are forecast to decline by an average of 11.7, so almost 12% per year for the next three years. And it has a high level of non-cash earnings. So um, we're going to take a look at some of these in a little bit more detail as we go. So uh, just a few months ago, in fact, in October 2022, Devon was trading at uh, $77. You know, if uh, if you've been in Occidental Petroleum for a while, you'll know that uh, about a year ago, so um, maybe... Um, Occidental was also trading at about 70 something dollars. So uh, they kind of crashed together and they sort of recovered a little bit together as well over the last few weeks or so. But um, we're a long, long way from 77 currently trading in the uh, sort of low 50s. So we'll have to see where we go, especially uh, after the earnings are announced tomorrow. Uh, for the past year, um, Devon, negative 10%. U.S. oil and gas is up 10%, and the U.S. market is up 11%. So um, oil in the U.S. market is kind of uh, level there in terms of the uh, uptick. Devon, those previous two quarters that I mentioned, which uh, whacked it you know, at over 20% in two quarters, one down 10%, the other 12%, quarter after quarter, 10.49, and the next quarter, negative 12.68. Yeah, that's, that's a huge hit. It takes a while to recover from something like that. 
Um, return versus the industry, Devon underperformed the US oil and gas industry, which returned 10.8 positive over the past year. Return versus the market, obviously the same kind of thing there, right? So uh, no surprises here, but uh, not a very good performance from Devon Energy if you're long in Devon Energy as I am. Uh, the company sort of from a fundamentals point of view looks pretty good. So the uh, forward ratio PE 5.7, Pretty good price to sales is less in less instructive to us because um, the company is profitable and because it has positive earnings uh, price to earnings and price to book is better than price to sales uh, but if you look at this little snapshot here this is a company that's generated approximately six billion in earnings uh, on about 18 billion dollars in revenue and it has a market cap of about 34 of those uh, fundamentals that are snapshot in addition to the be don't look too bad the financial health check here, this is uh, still with simply Wall Street, um, four out of six on the positive side. So uh, green arrows or green check marks for short-term liabilities, reducing debt, debt coverage and interest coverage and poor marks for long-term liabilities and debt. So um, debt, of course, is something that you all know by now, if you've been following my channel, I always look at and this uh, debt to equity ratio is quite high. I'm going to get into a snapshot of the stock in just a minute. So I'm not going to pause on that, but the total liabilities around 12 billion for a company that generated um, earnings of 6 billion. Doesn't look too bad, you know, sort of at a glance, but uh, you always gotta do uh, a dive that's a little deeper than that, right? This is a good slide, right? So the return on equity for Devon, um, the company 54%, the industry 32, high ROE, right? So return on equity, Devon's return on equity at 54% is considered outstanding. And the gross margin is pretty good too, but uh, as I said, I'm going to go into snapshot in just a minute. The peer average um, is 10. So this is peers. We're talking about uh, oil and gas companies and Devon's at uh, 5.7. So um, the entry point, if you're looking at uh, the benchmark and you use price to earnings as a, as a benchmark is uh, not bad, you know, uh, but most of its peers and including some of these companies, uh, Diamondback, Pioneer Natural Resources, uh, also great picks. So um, I'd hesitate to uh, to to simply look with uh, a very narrow lens at uh, Devon Energy and rather look at a peer analysis or comparison between some of these companies before um, you make a buying decision if you wanted to uh, open a new position or even add to your existing position, right? So just uh, take a deep breath and pause a little bit. So um, insider buyers are very instructive for, for me. Uh, I, I usually look at that and you can see over the past year, um, Glay Caspar bought about 20 share, 20,000 shares at 50 bucks. So he dropped a million dollars there. And Richard Moncrief, who's the uh, CEO, uh, bought in three different tranches. So you can see he bought in February twice and then once in March, also around 20,000 uh, shares. Or so you got about five, um, 12, and another 10. So more than 20,000, 22,000 and some. And you can see the price that uh, he paid, sort of around $53. His best buy was uh, 7,500 shares at 50 bucks. Uh, Clay Gaspar bought 20,000 shares at 50 bucks. So they're in the money on that one. You know, so looking pretty good. So yeah, you can see uh, Richard Moncrief's buys, almost 400,000, another 250, 650, and another 500. So more than a million dollars worth of um shares that uh, Richard Moncrief bought over the last few months or so. It's quite a lot. So let's take a quick look at the snapshot here. Then we look at some of the fundamentals and I'll wrap it up. And what I'll do on my next video is I'll compare Devon to uh, some of the other stocks that uh, I hold or had or have positions in. Uh, maybe I'll do a comparison of five. Maybe I'll take um, Devon, Oxy, Energy Transfer, Enbridge, and one other one. Well, Maybe Petrobras is there's one I haven't looked at for quite a while. And uh, I think Petrobras is still the cheapest super major you can buy from an energy point of view, but I'll take maybe I'll do that. Comparison of five, right? I'll do it on the next video. Devin, you can buy for about 50 bucks. It's a $34, a $34 billion market cap. So it's a mid-cap company. The uh, stock is trading way left of center on its 52-week range, which always makes you feel like you there's, there's a little bit of room for upside there, but who knows, right? Uh, especially when uh, the swings have been so wild, you know, like over the last three quarters, maybe four quarters, literally, let me just look at my numbers here. So last quarter, negative 1.51, uh, 1 1.51, negative 1 
the previous quarter, negative 12, the previous quarter, negative 10, and the quarter before that, negative 3.6, right? So Devon has absolutely been whacked every time it's announced its quarterly results. So um, tomorrow is going to be a very, very uh, exciting day uh, for people who are long in Devon to, uh, to see what happens after they announce their earnings. Earnings per share, uh, positive, as I mentioned, the PE ratio is pretty looking pretty good. The annual dividend yield is a, is a combination of variable and fixed dividend. So uh, that number is not necessarily strictly correct because uh, they, obviously the variable varies. That's why it's called a variable dividend. So it's actually not yielding 8.5. And right at the bottom there, you can see a large chunk of institutional ownership at the bottom in the middle. Only 2% short. So uh, not a lot of people are selling it short at $53. So they're not expecting it to go down. This is tip ranks. The uh, analyst average target is $62. Uh, we got eight analysts saying buy and eight saying hold. I'm in the hold camp. I wouldn't add to Devon at $53. If it drops below 50, uh, I might be tempted to uh, add a little more. Where it is now, 53, I'm comfortable just holding. I have a large position in Devon anyway, so um, I'll just hold it. Uh, it's okay. And in fact, I, I plan to hold Devon, which I've been in now for about maybe um, close to a year. Uh, I'll probably hold it um, and see if uh, if it gives me some recovery in addition to uh, paying me a decent dividend. Hopefully also get some uh, uptick on the positive start on the stock price, because even if it hits this average price of $62 from where it's currently trading at about $53, obviously that would be a nice little jump. The most recent um, analyst uh, Target price was $63, uh, stock rated a buy by John Freeman of Raymond James. It's just three days ago, you know, so um, just below that, Derek Whitfield from Stiefel Nicholas, uh, 77 bucks. Uh, that's a little bit, um, probably a little bit too aggressive, but anyway, valuation, let's take a look at this quickly and then I'll wrap it up shortly after this one. So the price earnings, as I said a few minutes ago, and the price to book are the most useful um, or most instructive Benchmarks, if you want to use that to uh, sort of gauge where the stock is at. The uh, price earnings for the trailing 12 months, so TTM trailing 12 months, 5.8, and the industry at 6.6. .6, so it's there or thereabouts, right? So um, just based on the PE alone, you should take a look at this and say, well, if I'm prepared to buy Devon with a PE of 6, I could probably look at the rest of the industry as well with a PE ratio of around 6 and find the one that meets my requirements best. Right, so my time frame, the dividend, the uh, where the stock price is currently trading, all that kind of good stuff, right? Uh, price to book three, the industry is at six, you know. So, uh, Devin kind of looks like feels like a buy, but uh, you need to do all your homework, not just look at a couple of benchmarks or listen to uh, Rudy on YouTube and say this is a buy. It's not a buy for me, it's a hold right now. Uh, profitability typical of companies in the oil and gas and fuels industry, so gross margin pretty good. Um, even though uh, at the top of the page, it says the gross margins on part of the industry norm, uh, it's 13% above the industry on a trading 12 month basis. And right at the bottom here, the net profit margin, 31% over 30, the industry is just under 20. So uh, pretty good. Also on a trailing 12 month basis, effective, is it? Yes or no? Return on equity, assets and investment, pretty good numbers here. Uh, all around good. The return on investment on trading 12 months, 31% versus the industry's 23 Pretty good. Financial strength. Hey, guys, here we go again. We'll always look at debt, right? Total debt to capital ratio. Um, this is for the most recent quarter. So earlier on, when I talked about the uh, debt capital ratio, uh, I was looking at the trailing 12 months, which is for the year. Uh, for the last most recent quarter, so MRQ, most recent quarter, 37% compared to the industry's 31. So a smidge higher than the uh, sort of industry average. Uh, can they afford to pay and service the debt? Uh, absolutely. Quick ratio. So the quick ratio also, most recent quarter, quick ratio is how much cash do you have in the bank and how many accounts do you have to pay this month? You know, sort of in a nutshell. If it's greater than one, it's good. If it's less than one, it's bad. So this is good. But uh, more important to year on a, on a longer term basis in terms of servicing the debt, the interest coverage ratio for the most recent quarter is 17. And the industry itself is pretty good at 12, but um, Devon at 17 is a good one. So... Uh, you know, it's sort of a bit of a mixed picture here. So uh, with Devon, uh, I said maybe a couple of times, <laughs> maybe I'm repeating myself too often. For me, it's uh, it's not a buy right now. I already have an existing long position. I would just hold it and see what happens. Um, you know, uh, 
WTI is back up uh, over $80. We'll have to see what happens with natural gas. Um, I know everybody's telling you that uh, we've now entered a phase which used to be uh, global warming that became climate change because it wasn't enough warming. But now, um, what did the guy from the United Nations say? We had global boiling, right? So um, on that particular topic, which is a different topic, I'd say uh, just wait a few months or so, and then we're going to be talking about global cooling again when everybody in the Northern Hemisphere starts freezing their butts off. Anyway, we might get a little spike in uh, natural gas as well at that point in time when uh, the consumption starts increasing and the supply demand uh, curve becomes more favorable. But anyway, that's uh, my take on Devon. So it's kind of like a, a, a nothing video because uh, I'm not uh, prepared to uh, do anything other than just sit on the fence and say, uh, for me, it's not a buy or a sell. Right now, it's just a hold. You can let me know if you think differently, and uh, I'm always happy to be educated. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.